Get ready for an exciting tutorial where we'll build a dynamic filterable image gallery using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. With this gallery, you will be able to easily sort images based on categories. In this tutorial, we'll focus on sorting images within the design and development sections, while the all section will showcase every image without categorization. The directory already contains images of the same size for the gallery, located within the image folder. We will start by creating a section tag with an ID of projects to represent the main section for our gallery. Within this section, we will create a div with the class portfolio container as the main wrapper for our entire HTML section. Additionally, we will have a div with the classes portfolio row and filter wrap to wrap our main image gallery heading and filter navigation. To give the heading a bold appearance, we will use an H2 tag along with a strong tag. To wrap our filter buttons, we will create a div with the class portfolio filter nav. Within this div, we will have button elements with the class btn and specify their type as button. We will also assign each button a unique data attribute ID, which we will use for targeting specific elements using JavaScript. Moreover, we will have two filter buttons labeled Design and Development. We will make the necessary adjustments to these buttons by adding unique data attribute IDs. This will help us identify and target each button individually. Additionally, we will add an active class to visually indicate which button is currently activated or in use. After creating the filterable button using HTML, we will now move on to creating an image gallery. To do this, we will create a div with the class portfolio wrapper to serve as the main container for our gallery images. Next, we'll create a div with the class portfolio call to represent a column for our image gallery. We will create another div with the class's portfolio item where we will place an image according to the category. Similarly, we will have another div with the class portfolio item. To represent the category within, we will specify a class along with portfolio item. The design or development class indicates the category of the item which can be used for styling or filtering purposes. For our image gallery, we will have three columns. For the other two columns, we will simply copy and paste the portfolio call element and change the image and category accordingly. You can customize the categorization pattern as per your requirements, it's not meant to be specific. Now that we're done with the HTML section, we'll be creating styles for our image gallery. I've already imported the Google font pop-ins for CSS styling and I've also written some default styles. Don't worry, these initial codes will be linked in the description. For the element with the class portfolio container, we will set a max width of 1070px, margin of zero on the top and bottom, and auto on the left and right to center the content horizontally. The padding will be zero on the top and bottom and 15px on the left and right. The class portfolio row will have the display property set to flex and the flex wrap set to wrap. We will style the ID projects associated with the section tag by setting the padding top to 60px and the padding left and padding right to zero. The filter wrap class is designed to have the flex direction set to column justify content set to center and align items set to center allowing the element to be centered both horizontally and vertically now we will style our main wrapper with the class portfolio wrapper we will give it a display property of flex set the gap to 15 px to create a gap between each child element and set the flex direction to column to stack the child elements vertically we will also give it a margin top of 30 px Next, we will target the class portfolio call inside the portfolio wrapper class. We will give it a display property of flex, set the flex direction to column, and set the gap within elements to 15px. Similarly, we will target the image within the development category, having the class development. We will give it a border radius of 5px and a height of 350px. 
Likewise, we will target the image within the design class. The border radius will be 5px and the height will be 250px. In the HTML, we have categorized elements alternatively inside the portfolio call element. This will make our gallery height constant on every screen. The class portfolio item will have a cursor of type pointer. Now, it's time to style the button for the gallery filter. We will browse through my GitHub repo and copy and paste the button style. The GitHub repo link will be available in the description. As we are almost done with the styles, we now have to target screen sizes greater than 768px. For this, we will use a media query. First, we will target the element with the class filter wrap. We will set the flex direction to row, which was previously set to column for small screen size, justify content set to space between, and align items set to center. The element with the class portfolio wrapper will have the flex direction set to row to ensure that the element with the class portfolio call is displayed horizontally. First, we will declare a constant variable name filter container. We will use the document.querySelector method to select the element with the class portfolio filter nav. Similarly, we'll declare another constant variable to select all elements with the class portfolio item using the document.querySelectorAll method. When the user clicks on an element with the class portfolio filter nav, we will add an event listener to it. To prevent the default action of an event from occurring, we will use the e.preventDefault method. When the user clicks a filter button, we need to remove the previously active class. To achieve this, we will find the first element within filter container that has the active class and remove the active class from the selected element. Then we will add the active class to the button that the user just clicked. Next, we will assign the data attribute value from the element that triggered the event to a constant filter value using the getAttributeMit method. To show or hide images based on filter value, we will iterate through each item in the gallery and apply the filtering logic to each individual item based on the selected filter value. We will set a condition to control the visibility of items based on the selected filter value. The conditional statement checks if the current item matches the selected filter value or if the filter value is set to all. If either condition is true meaning the item matches the selected category, or all items should be displayed, we will remove the height class from the item. We must add the show class to the item to ensure its display. Then, using CSS, we will apply styles to the show class to animate when it's visible. If any of the specified conditions are not met, it is necessary to remove the show class from the item to ensure that it is not visible. Simultaneously, we should add the height class to the elements to conceal the item. After finishing with JavaScript, we need to make some small changes in the CSS file. We will modify the display property of the height class to none, which will effectively hide the gallery items from view. Similarly, we will apply styles to elements with the dynamically added show class. We will create an animation that gradually increases the opacity of the elements over a duration of 4.5 seconds with an easing effect. Next, we will create an animation called Fading. When the animation starts, the opacity will be 0, and when it reaches 100%, the opacity will be 1, making the element completely visible. This animation is used for a smooth transition from invisibility to full visibility, enhancing the user experience. That's it everyone. We've successfully built our image gallery with filters using JavaScript. I hope you found this tutorial useful and learn something new. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. Your support inspires me to create more content like this. Take care and see you next time.